Insecurity, poor infrastructure, and hostile policies are some of the issues bedeviling the aviation industry in Nigeria, with calls on the Nigerian government to fix the rot for the sector to operate optimally. In what appears to be an escalation of an already bad situation, the issue of scarcity of aviation fuel is taking a heavy toll on the industry, with the operators already contemplating a shutdown. On Monday, the 14th of March, 2022, airline operators in Nigeria formally requested for licensing of its members for the importation of aviation fuel, otherwise known as ATK, to end the scarcity of the product and perennial hike in the price. In a meeting attended by the top management of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, with high-ranking officers of the House of Representatives, the airline's operators argue that they have the competence to import the required ATK for their operations without any hitches as they lament the hike in the cost of aviation fuel that has jumped astronomically from 190 naira per liter to 670 naira per liter. This has in recent times taken the cost of air ticket to an average of 70,000 naira, with a warning that it may even cost higher. Today on Nigeria Today, we'll take a look at some of the issues in the Nigerian aviation sector with a view to proffer a solution or a way forward. I am Lydia Ochi. Thank you for joining us. We understand operators in the industry and some key players are at the moment meeting with the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika. We believe the outcome of the meeting will help to shape many of these issues. But right now, let me introduce my guest. With me in the studio to put these issues in, in perspective is an aviation expert, Bello Alkali. You are welcome once more. Thank you very much again for having me. We also have an operator from Max Air, Raymond Omodiagbe, who is joining us via Zoom. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. All program. right. Okay. Now let's set the conversation in motion. But before then, let's see what the reactions were from stakeholders from the stakeholders meeting with the leadership of the House of Representatives with airline operators on Monday over the over the issue, especially high elevation fuel. Take a look. The unit cost per seat already is about 70,000 Naira per seat. About 70,000 Naira per seat. You've not talked about the insurance that is very static. It's not a monoproduct thing. It's a general thing across the basket. And it's not even just a local thing. It's a global thing. And this can surely cause pain for, for the Nigerian people. There's no doubt about it. And that's why we are, we are working with you to ensure that uh, uh, those uh, pens are minimized to the BRS minimum. We have come to terms. We have agreed on a number of things that will help the industry. Um, moving forward, we have a basis and the best line uh, for us to work. Now let's move on to the conversation proper. Let me begin with my guests uh, via Zoom, Mr. Raymond. Now. What are we likely to see from that meeting and what is currently going on? Oh, we are expecting that uh, the government should take the necessary step to address the situation because uh, few take about 40% of operational costs of uh, every airline in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, at the moment, um, whatever profit that the airline think they must have had in the past from the foregoing, they have been completely eroded. So because the fuel has taken toll on the cost of operations, most airlines are reducing their flights to save costs. And with the advent of this 
the NN trying to increase, but the increase is not solving the problem. So I accept the government uh, do something. So it's going to affect the industry. Most of will close down. Okay, now let me come to you, Bello Alkali. Are people still flying? Um, <clears throat> whether we like it or not, we have to understand that uh, with the hike in ticket fare recently, jacked up to 50,000 Naira minimum, uh, the traffic has drastically dropped. Hmm. Um, I recently just yesterday returned from Lagos and uh, I took some passengers to the airport. I saw how the traffic is like under normal circumstances and when it was before, before you reach the toll gate you meet a lot of traffic. By the time you get to the airport you are trying to park at the diplomatic car park, there is no space. But yesterday everywhere was fallow. That goes to show uh, the passengers uh, have dropped. Uh, so yes, definitely there is a drop in uh, passenger of lift because of the crisis that is going on at the moment. Okay, now uh, let me come to you, Mr. Raymond. Concerns were also expressed over the insurance operations in the country, noting that all the insurance companies operating in Nigeria cannot afford to insure an aircraft, hence the recourse to foreign insurance companies. Why is this so? Uh, well, the cost of uh, aeroplane itself, is the aeroplane business is a very expensive business, and because of buying an aeroplane, uh, if you want to buy, for instance, 737, a, a new one would cost as much as 48 million US dollars. And in Nigeria, you are told you require to have at least two before you can start operations. And insurance is not just about the aeroplane itself alone. Insurance also covers the passengers and also covered um, third party damage. And um, you have to have like maybe um, a billion dollar insurance to cover just one aircraft and the premium you know is very high so that's why most nigerian insurance company cannot uh do it and they have to get uh, those well-established uh, insurance company outside the country to participate in the business okay mr bello do you do you think Putting the cost on prospective travelers is the solution, as it is at the moment, considering the fact that many people may not be able, like you have said, may not be able to afford the air travels. I can't. <laughs> well, unfortunately, um, the operators are there uh, as businessmen to make money, not to lose money. Uh, if the logistics do not... Uh, play a role in them bringing down <coughs> the price of ticket, there is no way they can bring down the price of ticket. Uh, the Helebula, these few days, is all about the cost of aviation fuel, which, like my boss said, uh, account to about 40%. Uh, really, it's about 40% of the operational cost. Um, and you now add that to other factors, definitely the cost of uh, ticket as at 50,000 is uh, very much where it should be. Uh, if the situation is not arrested, I could see price of tickets going 70,000 and above. Uh, the operators will have no option uh, simply because uh, certainly for them to stay overboard and to make sure they fly passengers safely, uh, definitely there has to be an increase in the fare unless something drastic is taken by the government to reduce operational cost of these operators, that is definitely going to be a problem. Huh. This is really very, very sad. Now, uh, Mr. Raymond, if it gets to a point where Nigerians cannot fly anymore due to the high costs, what happens next? Well, it will be very sad that uh, that way if... Uh, if the government will allow that to happen because um, the aviation sector um, 
uh, engage more than uh, 200,000 people directly, not to talk about indirect, um, because uh, you have uh, so many companies associated with the industry, the, uh, the food sellers, the um, 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 the airport itself, because uh, the airport is like a shopping mall, so every activities are going on there. Once there's no air, like all those people will close shop. So something has to be done so that we don't get to that level that the airline will not be able to fly. Um, my, in my own opinion, I think government needs to do more for the airlines. You know, uh, the airlines are being taxed over tax recently they hacked the uh, the price of PSC and it is the passenger that is still going to bear the burden of that increase like we are seeing the fuel increase right now serving a toll on the um, the passengers and it also affects every other people that are working at the airport even immigration so all those are even the government employees will be affected because there will be no place to have um, custom immigration uh, and all that. So uh, it's going to have a serious economic uh, problem for the country. Tabelo, uh, Federal Executive Council recently approved 3.5 billion naira for the upgrade of some projects in Abuja, Lagos, and Kano International Airports. Does this not have advantage on the aviation industry operators? Absolutely, it does. When you are talking about um, airport development, yes, of course, uh, what are we talking about? Uh, the operators need airports to operate. Passengers require uh, uh, passenger-friendly um, airports. So it's a good omen. Uh, after developing the airports, government should also come and sit down with these operators, find out what their problems are. Believe me, the operators are very resilient in Nigeria. Uh, taking cognizance of all the challenges they are facing, but still, still they are trying their best to make sure their airplanes are in the sky. An aircraft that is sitting down on ground is not making money. An aircraft that is making money is the one that is flying. Mm. So government should come in, make sure all the challenges that these operators are facing are handled. I mean, yes, if somebody could buy an airplane for $50 million, of course, that person could bring in a Jet A1. Mm -hmm. However much it is, definitely it will not cost $50 million. Mm -hmm. Even if it does, there are so many operators operating in Nigeria, they could put their heads together mm -hmm. and bring in a consortium that could bring in this Jet A1. Mm -hmm. That problem will be a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. It's a high time. We are in 2022. People are going to space. We should have a situation whereby our aviation industry is handled by the operators. They could do it. If they could buy airplanes with such enormous money. sums of money, mm -hmm. they could also handle other projects in, in the aviation industry. Very true, very Thank true. You. Now, let's take a break now. We'll be back to talk more. Don't go away. This is NTA News 24, broadcasting from Abuja. You can watch us anywhere, anytime, on the following platforms. Start times, channel 101, Rick TV, channel 703, GS TV, channel 419, and Go TV, channel 46. For more information, log on to our website, www.nta.ng, or join us on our social media handles, Facebook at NTA News 24. For comments, suggestions and inquiries, send an email to news24 at nte.gov.ng or call us on the following numbers. NTA News 24, news and more news. Welcome back. We've been talking about issues in the aviation industry and my guests are still here with us via Zoom. We have Raymond Omodiagbe, General Manager, Operations and Business Development, Max Air, and also an aviation expert, Belo Alkali. Okay, let me go to Raymond Omodiagbe. We earlier spoke about static insurance. What about aircraft maintenance turnaround? 
has that improved over the over time in the sector yeah, uh, that's another critical area uh, to, there are two things that are so critical in operations that is um, the maintenance and fuel at the moment it's all, only aero that is carrying out having maintenance to a certain level and um, we don't have any of those things in nigeria so uh, every airline is taking whenever there is a heavy maintenance every airline is taking the airplane out of the country for heavy maintenance so it's an area that governments need to invest of what use having big buildings of airports and there is no aircraft to fly because you said me, did mention about government improving the airport facility that really ease the flow of traffic within the airport but will not help the operator so uh we don't have uh, mro in nigeria apart from aero that's and that is only 737 mm -hmm. so we have other airplane uh bigger than 737 and even at that 737 aero cannot cope with the number that we have in nigeria mm -hmm. so is uh, something that government needs to look at critically to improve the industry instead of taking the airplane out that money will be spent in nigeria okay that's my opinion about All right. maintenance okay uh we have a lot of well-trained engineers in nigeria we have good pilots we have good engineers we have good aviation professionals all they need is uh the equipment to deliver um, presently, we don't have such things in Nigeria. Now, Belu uh, Alkali, what impact do you see in the concessioning of the country's four major international airports making on the industry? Well, um, <clears throat> government definitely, unfortunately, is only in Nigeria that involves itself with aviation business. Uh, aviation business is capital intensive. In other client, government is not involved. It's purely mm -hmm. a business uh, entity, okay. or consortium that handles such airports. Uh, probably maybe that's the reason why you see the underdevelopment that we see in the airports mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, concession in the airports will help probably the government in saying uh, withdrawing gradually to uh, funding what uh, ordinarily should go to other sectors. Uh, concessioning the airports also will help in developing uh, the airports more mm -hmm. because you are co uh, concessioning these airports to consortium that are mm -hmm. professionals in nature in aviation mm -hmm. and they know exactly what are the needs of this airline better than what the government is providing for now okay okay M mr raymond what what is uh let me ask you uh the major a form of me a major had often been proposed to operators in the Nigerian aviation sector. Why has this been kind of difficult to achieve? That is forming a measure amongst operators. Is that not a way forward? Yeah, that should be the uh, way forward. But the, you know, uh, uh, the problem of ego, uh, and Manuna and Fenway Line and all that, it's a big problem in Nigeria. I'm talking personally, in my own personal opinion, not the opinion of uh, where I work. Uh, I'm one of those people who believe that uh, it would be nice to have a mega carrier from this present domestic, and then they can come together and form uh, a mega airline. Uh, because uh, it will be very difficult, honestly, it will be very difficult for a Nigerian carrier to compete favorably with all these uh, foreign carriers. Take, for instance, Air Ethiopia. Ethiopia is not flying older planes, they are flying new airplanes, and they have taken over the whole of Africa, the whole of Africa and beyond. So Ethiopia goes everywhere. So 
how are you going to have a carrier from one individual having a carrier to compete with Ethiopia Airlines? Even if you have a government airline, uh, I don't think they will be able to compete favorably with such carrier. So the way to go is to fuse these airlines together, like they did in the bank. He worked in the banking center. So I believe he will also work in the aviation sector. Today we have uh, uh, mega banks in Nigeria. So we can also do that on the aviation sector. Maybe come and introduce politics that will force the carrier to match. So uh, it will help. Okay, uh, Mr. Bello, what is the situation of uh, aviation fu fuel now following Monday's House of Representatives intervention, which had the stakeholders agreeing to an interim price regime? Yeah, whatever it is, uh, it will continue to bite us back until when a, a watertight policy is put in place or until when other alternatives are put in place for aviation fuel to be readily available at the cheaper rate for operators to source and uh, that way i mean uh, ticket price uh, uh, will definitely come down uh, at this point in time if i remember i watched uh, the program uh, they are talking about uh, 30 days after 30 days what happened so um, there has been a little relief that probably may last after the next 30 days i'm just hoping the next meeting they are having right now with the minister uh, will bring out uh, a further relief and uh, a probable solution to the embryo we find ourselves in today okay mr raymond um what major areas do you think capital flight can be curtailed in the industry? Uh, well, um, uh, uh, well, a lot of damage has been done. So I think what the government needs to do is to do what we call damage control. Um, they were designated, they open up, uh, we're a developing nation. We ought not to have opened up our sky the way we did. Well, that has been done. So all we need to do is to try to manage the already bad situation that we find ourselves. That a foreign airline is operating to three, four, five uh, airports in Nigeria. So it's not going to help. So it's not going to help the local carrier. So the local carrier is supposed to be feeding this foreign carrier. Uh, but uh, presently, we don't have that opportunity anymore. So the and virtually doing like uh, domestic like, like uh, what they would say, cabotage. So what government needs to do is to see how they can address uh, the issue of designating airlines. If we say we are open sky, it can still be controlled. You know, we don't open one entry point for the carrier, not giving them so many airports. Like Ethiopia is like a, a domestic carrier in Nigeria, operate to five or six airports in Nigeria. So that's not going to help the economy itself. But they, they are only taking out from Nigeria. They are not bringing it into Nigeria. I think we need to look at it that way. None no. of these carriers, how many Nigerians are they employed? What are they bringing on the table? Nothing. What kind of development are they giving to us? Nothing. It's only the Nigerian carrier that will train Nigerians in various fields in aviation. So these other carriers will only train them for what they will benefit from, how to sell tickets and how to board passengers. Okay, so it's Nigerian carrier that will train them in all those technical areas. Okay, so I, my advice is that uh, the government need to review all the bilaterals that we have you know, the designation that they've had so that Nigerian carrier can have space. What is the way go. forward? What is the way forward in the current situation in the aviation industry to ensure a boost for the sector, for economic development, and to ensure global best practices? Yeah, uh, like we will always point out, uh, the aviation industry is the economic nerve center of any nation. 80% uh, of the people traveling in Nigeria because of the bad roads and the incessant uh, issues of kidnapping, armed robbery, people would rather fly. So I want to believe the government should give more consideration uh, 
mm. and should have listening ear to all the problems of these carriers mm -hmm. that are really struggling very much uh, to make sure their mm -hmm. airplanes are flying, okay. to make sure passengers okay. are flying. Right. Uh, responsibility of the government first and foremost mm -hmm. is for social services. Mm -hmm. So if that will be taken into consideration, I'm sure the government will do a lot right. to make sure the carriers are comfortable in doing their business. Thank you so much. This is where we say goodbye on this episode of the program. It's been quite engaging with my guest, aviation expert, Belo Alkali. We appreciate your presence and your thoughts. Thank you. I also want to thank Raymond Omodiagbe, General Manager Operations and Business Development, Max A. Thank you for your time on the program. We appreciate Thank you very much for having me. And to our viewers, thank you for being a part of the program. Remember, you can still watch this episode and other ones on www.youtube.com slash News 24 hub Thank you for watching. I am Lydia. Oji. Have a wonderful evening. Goodbye. <laughs>